These are the original eyepieces which come with the Skullwatcher Evo Star and many other Skullwatcher eyepieces. This is a Super 25 wide angle long eye relief and this is the 10 millimeter one. And I'm going to now to test them on the planet Jupiter. This is the eyepiece as you can see. Quite lightweight. Which can be a positive point in a way. And this is the 10 millimeter long eye relief, super 10 long eye relief. So I'm going to test them. They have a few, uh, they're not Kellner, they're not Plusle, they're something um, special to the Sky Watcher. So, and, and they have a few um, less um, lens elements, optical elements. So. I expect uh, they'll be different to whatever eyepiece that I have tried, which may have more than four or five lens elements. Let's go and test them under the stars. I'm using the Skywatcher Evo Star 90, and this is the stock eyepiece that comes free with this telescope, and that is the um, Super 25 wide angle long eye relief eyepiece. This is a 25 millimeter. I'm looking at the Jupiter, and I can say that it's very sharp. The image, it's beautiful. I can see details on that image, uh, like two cloud belts of the Jupiter. Satellites look like uh, uh, clear dots, clear circles actually. Two of them are very close together. So let's just see if I can borrow it. What will happen? You can see the image is very crisp and sharp. I have not used the barley yet, but I can want to say because there is not many elements, lens elements, glass elements in this. Practically, the sky background is very dark and the planet is uh, really well defined. I think it's, it's as good as a teleview. <laughs> Do you believe that? Yes, I believe that. And I'm going to put the uh, immediately teleview um, an optic 24 uh, millimeter just to compare with this. Okay, this is a Teleview Panoptic 24 millimeter 68 degrees, and uh, several times quickly I changed between uh, this eyepiece and this Super 25. And uh, okay, uh, this at the center is as good as the Panoptic. Slightly probably this is a little bit sharper, but there is a little, some more light scatter with this one uh, with this one at the center is very sharp it goes a little bit to the margins i mean 50 percent away you see some chromatic aberration so at the center is very close to the panoptic panoptic has all across actually is is not bad unless you're very close to the edge so this is at the center sharper this is all across almost sharp the image when it is in focus. Another thing which may affect the amount of the details we see in, uh, in the panoptic is that this is 24, this is 25, so you millimeter focal length. So practically with this one you have a slightly larger image, you, you notice it actually. And uh, that may contribute a little bit to the a better clarity and uh, but light control in this one is excellent the sky background is black better than this i can say this one um the velvety background in this one is better than this one and the light control light is scatter at the center better than this uh, panoptic but in general across the field of view this is better So I'm now using the Barlow, which is su supplied with this two times Barlow, with a 25 millimeter. So practically, it is equal to 12 and a half millimeter eyepiece. And at the center, the image is very sharp, chromatic aberration free. When it goes out of the center, I mean 50 percent or 40 percent out of the center, uh, it gets chromatic aberration. Near the edge is very, uh, you know, colorful image, so it's not good. But at the center, very sharp, very good, 
I can say that uh, I could see the IO actually passing the disk of the planet and I could see the shadow. I thought that that's an interesting thing that uh, to note that I could see that actually the shadow of the IO passing. Let me just quickly switch to the panoptic and see what can I see here. Okay, I'm using the stock roller two times that came with Evo Star 90 and I'm using Panoptic 24mm. Uh, I don't see any difference in the image quality. Probably the image in the uh, center of the 25mm super wide was actually slightly a tad a epsilon better. So that's a good conclusion in here. <laughs> so, but uh, that is at the center both of them at the center of the field of view really good comparable nice view and both of them look as if they're chromatic aberration free at the center okay this is a 10 millimeter super 10 uh, long eye relief i guess that comes with the evil star 90 as a kit set and the image quality is really good better than the other one better than two and a half millimeter you can see more details unfortunately there is a little layer of cloud but i can see the same details as the other one at the center uh, it's quite you know color free beautiful nothing wrong with this i can use it i immediately want to go and change it to the uh, 10 millimeter spivoni aspheric okay i'm using the barlow with a 10 millimeter uh, super a uh, long eye relief uh, and I can say that the image is good I can see the dot of the eye oak very clear and uh, yeah it's better than the when I was using the one of the let me just quickly change to the one of four millimeter I'm surprised actually that is so good the image is a bit paler but uh, you can see the details Oh, the image is not actually bad, not much different from the 5mm Barlow, 10mm Barlow 2, two times I'm becoming 5. So, um, that for Mozilla is slightly uh, smaller, a little bit more clear I felt, but this one is also good actually. I can see that judging by the what I can see, I have a detail now other than cloud tops. And that is the dot of the IO, the shadow of the IO. And I can say that this is also good on that. It's one of the rare occasions I can say that this is good on this telescope, this near one of 4mm. Uh, which one I prefer? Let me just go back to the Barlow, the 10mm. Okay, now I'm quickly back to the 10mm Barlow to two times, equal to 5mm. The image is slightly again is smaller. Uh, which one? I can say this is very similar to the uh, Nirvana. Nirvana is slightly bigger. I can say that Nirvana is slightly sharper probably and Nirvana across the field of view is uh, chromatic aberration free this one away from the center you have chromatic aberration this, this train of the eyepiece and the uh, Barlow create that chromatic aberration so probably better Barlow will do better than this I will change this Barlow now yeah changing to the z band two times Barlow actually improved the image slightly less chromatic aberration sharpness is the same so i cannot say about that but less chromatic aberration uh, so um, this barlow is better than the, the supplied barlow in that sense but details you can see remains the same this is the vixen slv 5 millimeter and this is the supplied 10 millimeter barlow by two times uh, so both are equally practically uh, five millimeter now. Um, I cannot see any difference between this and this. That's that's surprisingly. This is one of the sharpest eyepieces that I've ever seen. I have my some of my best views of the Saturn with this eyepiece, and I have read a lot of reviews. Some people say that this actually is uh, better than the Teleview Radiant, uh, which is one of the good eyepieces that is good for planetary viewing so um, if I believe that that must I must say that this 25 mm this 10 millimeter parlor two times 
uh, is equal to this five. I don't see much difference. Probably, yeah, the same amount of the yeah chromatic vibration. No, the same amount. With a good bar low, the chromatic vibration probably is reduced very well to this. So, <laughs> yeah, the cheap one is equal to this. This is around 110, depending on the where you buy it. Uh, second hand, sometimes you can get a 50 pounds, 60 pounds. So all in all, I can say that this 10 and 25 millimeter with the Barlow, a very good tool to start your observing. You don't need anything if you just uh, go with this tool. For a long time probably you will not need anything. Unless you're really a purist. At the center of the field of view, this is really sharp. This is almost all across is very sharp. The Barlow, probably you will benefit to have a better Barlow, but uh, it's workable without even a, uh, a premium one. You can use the barless supply to you and just observe, have a good uh, good time observing. Jupiter is a difficult target and this test I've done on them proved to me that these two supply pieces are actually working with this uh, uh, Skywatch EOS uh, Star 90. You don't lose much if you continue to use them. At the same time remember, these are cheap high pieces. Uh, if they drop or anything damaged um, they don't cost you a lot. If you have a premium wire piece and it falls accidentally on a hard surface or anywhere or get fogged or fungi in it, you lose a lot of money, you are, you are at a loss. So these cheap wire pieces are always nice to have it, even you know, just as, as fun sometimes, just to push the boundaries. Um, at this moment of time I think that when using this 10mm and I pre before this I used the Nirvana 7mm I can say I prefer this one <laughs> this, is, this is amazing the result is amazing of course you know me I have videos about that how sharp is the Teleview Nagler 7mm which is really a standard it's original type 1 and I can say compared with this 10 I prefer the image in 10 uh, it's sharp I can see the IOS dot the shadow on the Jupiter really good I prefer this one to this one as you can see I'm, I'm really gobsmacked I'm saying this I cannot believe I'm saying this I prefer the image in this to this let me go for a star guide the 8mm I prefer that one actually so up to now I was telling and thinking that this uh, uh, 10mm eyepiece is built for optimum viewing with the Evo Star. That's the reason the Skywatcher gives this. But now I think that ED8mm also, Stargate the ED8mm, is also provides optimum optical view for this. So I don't, I will not go anything, you know, lower than the 8 or 7 with this uh, Evo Star. I will have 10, which is coming with that, 8 probably, and that's it. I will be happy with that. 7mm in the run of probably is also alright. Uh, anything lower than that, no, I will not go for it. The image will deteriorate. You will lose a little bit details. What is amazing with the Stargate the ED 8mm is the light control, light scatter control. You don't see stray light you see black velvet and um, sky background no halo around a bright object like Jupiter nothing like that it's pure image with other things you may see actually that halo I even saw it with the panoptic 24 millimeter slight light scatter it was not well controlled this one well controlled really good as good as the 10 millimeter 10 millimeter is really good 10 millimeter super wide angle super uh, which comes with this these two are match made in this heavens probably you should say okay i'm using uh, takashi l is seven and a half millimeter beautiful pure image paler than what you can see with the star guider or Stargate 8 mm and this uh, Super 10 mm, but it's pleasant, it's, it's just really beautiful. 
I use the Nagler, Nagler has a halo around it, so it's not good. It's not good in this target at this time or anything like that. Uh, Nagler is very sharp also, but this one is sharper, this one is sharper. Stargard is good, this is the sharpest. And yeah, this one is also nice. For the price, I think this punch is above its weight. Yeah, I don't like to tell this, but <laughs> this Super 10 is practically like a Takahashi 10. If there is a Takahashi LE 10, I don't know if there is or not. But this is as good as that. I have Takahashi 7.5 and, and 12, so I don't know if there is a 10. But this is really good. This is brilliant, I guess.